and the behavior of the river is basically governed by the silt and sediment that are flowing in that river so this can be understood through an example that suppose we have a river in which the flowing water is taking with it the coarser particles and then we have a river in which the flowing water is, is taking with it a very fine particle so we can visualize that uh, the river that is carrying the coarser particle will not be able to carry the water to a further distance compared to that of river water that is carrying the finer particle right so based upon the uh, silt content based upon the particles that are uh, present in the bed slope based upon the sediment the behavior of the river is identified and this governs the silting and scoring process this governs the uh, flooding in the river this covers governs the meandering process and the spreading of the river so now let let us discuss few of the uh, prominent behavior of the river and in this the first is the straight reaches and uh, the straight in straight reaches what happens is the river cross section is in the shape of trough okay now here what happens is that uh, the water is basically flowing at a very high velocity and because of the high velocity the central part of the bed slope keeps on getting eroded and because of which a uh, trough shape is obtained and because of this trough shape and because of this trough shape what happens is the level of the water is less at the middle portion so if you see here the level of the water is lesser at the middle portion okay and because of this uh, behavior the transverse rotary currents are developed okay so because of this behavior transfer transverse rotary currents are developed in this straight reaches then we have bends and bends is the uh, we must have seen that there is a change in the curvature of the river as they move along its length okay and this change in the curvature as we move along the length is called as bends the reason for the bends is the scoring and the silting is the scoring and silting process and the reason for scoring and silting process is the centrifugal force that is exerted by the moving water in at the bed slope so basically what happens is happens is that uh, we have a river channel in which the water is flowing okay we have a river channel in which the water is flowing and as the water moves along a certain curve okay if the water is moving along a certain curve we have a con convex side and we have a concave side so this side is the convex side okay and this is your concave side okay so let's say this is your convex side and this is your concave side right so when the water is uh, flowing along the bend there is a high pressure zone created along the convex side and because of the high pressure zone that is created the water tends to move from the high pressure to the low pressure zone okay so the water moves from the high pressure zone to the low pressure zone and uh, the velocity of the water at the bed slope is very less compared to the velocity of the water at the top so the velocity that is present at the uh, bed slope is not sufficient sufficient enough to counter the centrifugal force so as the water moves from the high pressure zone to the low pressure zone the water from the top takes its place okay the water from the top takes its place and this water moves in the upward direction right so because of this what happens is this silting and scoring process happens okay so as the water is moving across the river channel as the water is moving along the river channel what happens is at the convex side at the convex side the deposition of silt starts to take place okay at the convex side the deposition of silt starts to take place and at the concave side the erosion of the 
bank takes place all right at the concave side the erosion of the bank takes place and because of which because of this deposition also a new shape or shape is start to create so what happens is at the concave or the outer edge the scoring process takes place that is the removal of the silt particles from the concave side takes place and the deposition at the convex side takes place and this process keeps on continuing right because and because of this process change in the direction of the river takes place right next we have meanders and uh, meanders is basically uh, the interconnected bends right so when numerous bend join together then meanders are formed when numerous bends are joined together we have meanders so the formation of successive bend of reverse order may lead to the formation of complete s curve called as meanders and the reason for the formation of meanders is the extra turbulence generated due to the presence of excessive river sediment during the flood right so basically the when the uh, this continuous process of uh, scoring and silting takes place the meanders formation becomes more frequent and then we have a certain meander parameter we have a meander length and meander length is the uh, age length of one meander that is the tangential distance between the corresponding points in a meanders distance between the corresponding point that is if you are taking the the rise as our reference point then this is the meander if you are taking the uh, the trough then we will have that as a meander length then we have meander width and meander width also called as meander belt is the distance between the outer edge of the clockwise and the anti clockwise loop so distance between the outer edge of the clockwise and the anti clockwise loop is called as the width of the meander or the meander belt and the ratio of meander belt to meander length is called as meander ratio then we have torusity and torusity is the ratio of the length along the channel that is the arc length to the actual direct axial length of the river reach so that is the arc length the overall arc length and the actual length of the direct axial length of the river reach so what is, so if this is the origin and this is the ultimate destination or the fi final point of the river then this is your arc length and this is your axial distance then we have crossing or crossover and uh, this is the short straight reach of the river connecting two consecutive clockwise and the anti clockwise loop and uh, this basically means is that two consecutive same type of loop so if you are taking clockwise loop the distance between the two consecutive clockwise loop or the distance between two anti clockwise loop is called as crossing or crossover now uh, to calculate the meander length and the meander belt we have a dominant discharge and uh, this dominant discharge is 1 by 2 2 2 by 3 of the maximum discharge and uh, the if we are given the Do, uh, dominant discharge value then the meander length is equal to 65.8 under root of dominant discharge then the finally uh, uh, we have a cut off and you see what happens is that uh, many times excessive because of the excessive silting and scoring meanders are formed at a very short distance okay because of excessive silting and scoring meanders are formed at a very short distance so what what are tends to do is instead of following the meander path instead of following this path the water takes the shortest path water just abandons the formation of the meander and chooses the shortest path so this is called as cut off so this is called as cut off okay so if we have a this kind of meander then the water just cut off the conventional path that is formed by the meanders and it's and it takes its own shortest path then we have cut off ratio cut off ratio is the ratio of length of the bend to the length of the chord and uh, uh, length of the bend is the meander length okay so the can, the path that the water was 
what should have conventionally taken right so this is your length of the bend and divided by length of the chord length of the chord is the cutoff length and this uh, depends upon the channel property because more the silting and scoring process is there are more chances of forming uh, meanders at a very short duration and there is a more prob probability of cutoff and the ratio uh, normally varies from 1.7 to 3 and it is tangential to the flow of the river now this is just a general point that the radius of the loop that is formed divided by the maximum discharge has a value of 13 to 24 okay so this was all about the behavior of the river all right so this is all for this lecture thank you for watching if you feel the lecture was useful to you like the video comment your views in the comment section and share among your friends this lecture and for more videos like this subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the regular notification thank you for watching have a nice day